Well, Patrick Craven's debut Inside Labour column last week certainly did a very good job of demolishing that spurious argument that links joblessness to poverty, when there are millions of people all over the world, and in South Africa as well, who are desperately poor, although they're supposedly working, working in vulnerable employment. I thought it was also very good timing that he did that, bringing up the International Labour Organization um, reports, because he did it at a time when we had that annual circus at Davos in Switzerland, the place where that private club of the super rich uh, bring in politicians, government ministers, etc., to bribe, browbeat them, browbeat them to, to follow policies that make the rich poor richer <laughs> at the detriment of the poor. But two weeks ago, I said I would look into fightbacks, and in particular, the Midrand workers the longest dispute in this country. 22 years this group have been fighting to get their jobs back and their pensions paid out. I have investigated over the past two weeks and in the process I found that their protest, their struggle has highlighted major problems, serious problems in the labour movement. Above all the debilitating factionalism within the South African Municipal Workers Union, SAMU, the Kwasatu affiliate. Now one result of all this factionalism and infighting and accusations of corruption, has been workers demanding a return to grassroots democracy. The sort of thing that was promised in those euphoric days immediately preceding and after the transition in 1994. It was that sort of atmosphere that emboldened workers to, to take actions they hadn't taken before. And one of them, including the Midrand workers, was to challenge the corrupt practice that seemed to be widespread of selling jobs, of managers telling workers, if you pay me X amount, 120 rand, 300 rand, you get this job or that job. At the same time, the workers turned against the sweetheart unions that were beloved of bosses at the time and joined militant unions, in this case, SAMU. Now, I think it was a combination probably of joining a militant union and protesting about corruption that resulted in the mass sacking at Midrand. But subsequent to that, these workers were let down badly by bureaucracy within the union movement and more than once. Now there's a new federation in the making, also coming out of this whole turmoil in, in, in the labour movement, and two breakaway municipal unions that are claiming, like the new federation, to be going back to talk about democratic basics and reinst reinstituting the whole idea of grassroots democracy. Well, as matters play out, the 53 remaining uh, workers from Midrand who are still to the forefront, a number of workers have obviously died in the meantime, are still in there looking towards these new developments and hoping once again that their battle will not again be sidelined, that finally whatever the truth is will come out. Well anyhow that will be the focus of my Inside Labour column uh, this week which you can access on the same platform again, Fin24 tomorrow and a version of which will appear in the City Press business section on Sunday. Until then, as always, over to you. Comments, criticisms, suggestions, even compliments will be welcome at editor at fin24.com. That's editor at fin24.com. And for this week, that's all from me. Cheers.